I seldom write down my thoughts, mostly because I am lazy, partly because I have a utilitarian take on language. I use it sometimes as a hammer, sometimes as a knife. This is one of the things I did not learn from Ben, for whom language is an object of respect, a central component of analysis. For this memorial, I want to be careful about what I say. It's the least I can do for them. <coughs> I owe a lot of what I am to him. <coughs> Except for his being chair of my dissertation committee, Ben was not formally my teacher. I never took a course or a seminar with him. If Ben was not a teacher, he was in many ways my mentor. He mentored without a heavy hand. I don't remember him telling me this idea is wrong or that idea is wrong or that I should try another avenue of analysis. I learned from Ben through what he said or wrote more than anything else from the kind of person he was. I love George Cahan, but he was always Professor Cahan, never George, even when I was drinking his Scotch whiskey. I never referred to Ben as Professor Anderson. The closest to an honorific I was comfortable with was Pat Ben. I would like to ask his other students about this because maybe my situation was unique. Ben to me was firstly a friend before he was professor. I first met Ben in Jakarta in 1964 when he was finishing research for his PhD dissertation. <coughs> the student professor relationship happened much later. I was in Jakarta studying Bahasa in preparation for going to Cornell. It was there where, to my horror, I received news that I have not been accepted to the Cornell graduate program. Although Ben, although ben never claimed it, I think he was the one who persuaded Professor Cahen that I was worth taking a risk on. Ben may have had reason to regret this later, <laughs> but he was patient enough to see me through to a PhD. I may have been his first PhD student. Uh, I'm not sure he re ever recovered as a result of that. Um, I learned about Indonesia first from the two best possible teachers, Ben Anderson and the historian Ong Ho Kam. They took me with them to Wayang performances, Kraton in unlikely places like Cheribon, Kretek factories in Kurdus, <laughs> traditional massage in Georgia, over glasses of steaming tea and Kretek haze. Pa Ong and Ben would locate each experience in richly detailed Javanese cultural history. <coughs> I wrote this when Pa Ong passed away in 2007. Now, I've lost my two best teachers in Indonesia. At one point in my years in Ithaca, I shared an apartment with Ben. It was at this time that I learned that apart from Javanese and German texts, Ben read suspense novels, uh, boils. But that's not all. Ben read the Oxford English Dictionary at bedtime. <laughs> but ben, ben was a good sport even when I pulled pranks on him. One time on St. Patrick's Day, I was the one who cooked. Ben came home famished. When he opened the rice cooker, he lost his appetite when he saw that the rice was green. <laughs> to me and 
two other friends who were around at that time. <coughs> I remember Melly, Tungul, Tak, the other denizens of 102 West Avenue. Ben was invariably kind and generous. In a way, it was this generosity of spirit which was the base of Ben's progressive politics. He cared deeply for people. Or he, he refused to see them as ideological categories. It's not such a bad time to be progressive. In the half century I knew Ben, I can't think of a single issue where Ben ended up on the right. Okay. This included refusing to use his name when there was a namesake pope he did not like. Uh, but Ben was not uncritical. At one point, he accused me of, be of behaving like Don Jose. Maybe that was the reason he heartily, heartily agreed to be my best man when I got married to Nancy all the way in cold sh uh, Chicago in the middle of winter 1968. I never learned enough of cultural analysis to incorporate it in my thesis. But like him, I took advantage of Indonesian inflation to stretch my fieldwork money to stay in Indonesia for a year and a half. We stayed for months at a time in Bandung, Yogyakarta, Samarang, Bali, places selected for their rich culture and only marginally for my PNI, my Indonesian Nationalist Party research. I don't remember Ben intervening too much on my thesis on the Partai Nasional Indonesia. Maybe that's mainly because my memory cells are fast declining and I've forgotten whatever criticisms he had at that time. What I do remember is that he suggested that I change the title from Nationalism in Search of Ideology to Joel Ropamora in search of ideology. <laughs> During my thesis exam, when a committee member, I won't mention who, asked where the theory was in my thesis, Ben retorted, come on, you wouldn't recognize theory if you stepped on it. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to end with a question for the speakers after me and to those in the audience who know Ben's work. If you draw a thread or threads through the work of Ben's Filipino students, not the Indonesian students, let's deal with the Filipino students. If you draw a thread or threads through the work of Ben's Filipino students, Ray Leto, Vince Rafael, John Aguilar, Vince Boudreau, Jojo Abinales, Carol Hall. And that's a nice list of people. Um, what are the threads that are identifiably Ben Anderson? Okay. And uh, Vince Gamitin Kita Dito. Uh, how do these threads contribute to an answer to the questions? raised by Mila Guerrero in her recently published book and the introduction by Vince Rafael. Thank you very much.